Have you ever been faced with the problem of having to remember something? Perhaps something you were to buy at the grocery store? Or the answer to some examination question? Or the next step in a lab experiment? Or the name of a person you wanted to introduce? Yes, it is important to be able to remember. You may begin now. And I had just uh, began my uh, consulting business and uh, was learning more and more about the human mind and going out to people and trying to share with them these lessons about our brain and our memories and our creativity. And what I was finding is many, many people were just totally ignorant or weren't up to date in terms of what our science world was beginning to uncover. And so I said, well, let's start a memory competition. When I first heard about the U.S. Memory Championship, I figured this had to be a bunch of guys who couldn't remember what a girl is. That, that was sort of the image I had in my head. And I was surprised to show up and find out that it was, first of all, a surprisingly diverse group. Men and women, a wide range of ages, wide range of backgrounds. It's, it's always been amazing to me talking about uh, when people ask me the hardest thing in doing a memory competition. And I always tell them the hardest thing you have in getting a memory competition together or the mental athletes. So a mental athlete is somebody who trains their mind, pushes it sort of to the farthest extremes to see what they can what they can do, what their potential is. Three weeks out of high school, I took a job as a telemarketer. I called a guy up on the phone. I said, hey, do you want your chimney cleaned? We clean chimneys. He said, I don't want my chimney cleaned. I'm trying to sell my house. And I said, well, if you're trying to sell your house, you better have a clean chimney. And he laughed. He said, look, I don't want my chimney cleaned, but will you go to work for me? I sell memory seminars, and I want you to go to work for me. And I went to work for him. I was 18 years old, and, you know, that was 18 years ago. I'm getting ready to be 36. So, I mean, it's, it's exactly half my life. And, and that's such an important part of the story. Because people think, man, this guy is the USA Memory Champion. He must be a friggin' genius. No! I'm a guy who got kicked out of college, went to work for a memory company when I was 18, and that guy taught me this. When my marketing material says that I'm the nation's number one memory expert, I wanted it to be true. And that was my motivation. And, um, and it is now. Let me, all, let me ask you all this. How many of you in this room think that you have a bad memory? Anybody here think you got a bad memory? All right, I got my work cut out for me. Don't know. <laughs> you don't. Your, me your memory is a million times better than you think it is, eh? You, you have a memory that is on fire. The problem is not that you have a bad memory. The problem is, is most likely you have an untrained memory. I know I talk fast, but I try to teach a lot in a short amount of time. I have numbered locations all over this ballpark. <laughs> These, I don't refer to them as locations. I refer to them as what? Files. Files. We're going to do the same thing here in this room. I want everybody to say number one is the screen. So what's one? Screen. Number two is the banner. What's two? Banner. Three is the tree. What's tree? Three. Three, three. three is tree. There you go. What's one? Tree. Two? Banner. Three. Three. Four is the flag. What's four? Flag. On that light, I want you to imagine Somebody's sitting on it and their knees are hanging over the lights. I have turned every number into a picture. Every number between one and a thousand. When you say 28, I don't think 28. I think ninth. Then you say 47. I don't think 47. I think a rock. So I got Michael Jordan slam dunking a basketball on my number three five. William Tell right here. He's getting apple shot off his head. So what do we have here? What do we have here? In the memory business, there's really, there's really two groups of people. There are people who go out and they teach memory seminars and, and they make a living selling CDs and memory books and that kind of stuff. And then there's another group of people who, can, who are considered the experts and they compete in these tournaments and they memorize just a freakish amount of information, you know, and they hold all these world records and stuff. And, very, and, and really, 
there's not very many people, if if any, other than, than what I'm doing, who really tries to merge the two worlds. And I must memorize a minimum of a 300 digit number in five minutes, not to win, but just to be competitive. number forwards. Now I'm going to say it backwards. I'm going to start at the last digit, which is a two, and go forwards to the first digit, which is also a two. So going backwards, that number should be 221551 5, 5, right? There's no other person in the United States who can do what I do. The USA Championship, I'm going into that thing and I'm thinking, uh, this is mine. We'll start the, the, the day, day's competition off with uh, 99 pictures of people with a first and last name. And each of the competitors has 15 minutes to memorize as many of those people's names as they possibly can. Take them away after 15 minutes, give them back uh, the picture scramble. Without the names under them. And they have to write the first name and the second name in, and they get a point for a first name and they get a point for a second name. Mental athletes, you may begin. <coughs> One of the things I'm always asked is about, uh, help me remember names and faces. It is probably the, the most frequently asked question even of our mental athletes because they do these 99 pictures with names and faces. Well, how do you do that? All right, so names and faces, it's one of the trickier events. So what you gotta do is kind of use a distinguishing feature on their face. So say somebody has a big nose, you use their, their big nose, whatever comes to you first. And then asking for their name, say it's Joe, I would think of like a Sloppy Joe burger. Um, so combine the two images, just slap that Sloppy Joe all over his nose, it's dripping down his nose. And the idea is the next time you meet him, you're not gonna think about what was his name, you're gonna see, oh, his nose, like you did the first time, it came out of you, and then Sloppy Joe on the nose, and then Joe, Sloppy Joe, Joe. So last year for the 2010 competition, I had trained really hard. And so I went into the competition really, really ready, uh, feeling super confident. Uh, I think a big part of that confidence came from the fact that nobody really expected me to do well. I did the first event, which was names. I actually did surprisingly well. Uh, I got 109 correct names, and that put me in the top seven. And you know, at that point, people were starting to be like, hey, who's that guy? That's cool, congrats. It wasn't really until the next event, the numbers, where people were like, okay, this guy's serious because I broke a U.S. record. I, I memorized 178 digits, and uh, that broke Ronnie's record. Um, who was very sportsmanlike about it, but I know inside he was crying. Anyway, so at that point it got serious, then we did a speed cards. I also did really well. I won the event uh, with 98 seconds, I think. And at that point I was number one in the standings, so I had kind of shocked everybody, I guess, because they didn't expect me to be there. And Ronnie White, I know, was kind of in turmoil in his head. And at that point, I was like, okay, well, wow, here I am. All I have to do is memorize two decks of cards. Memorizing cards is my forte. So we went backstage to memorize the two decks of cards, and they made a big point about which way you picked up the deck of cards to start memorizing, because they had a fixed order that they were going to compare to. So. I actually memorized a deck of cards by picking it up and um, starting from the bottom, working my way backwards. But what they wanted was you flip it over and start from the back and go upwards. But in my mind, I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll just, you know, I'll go a bit slower, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it that way. So they said, three, two, one, go. And of course, I just mindlessly in the zone, just flipped them over and did them the right, the way that I know how. Oh, 
right? It's definitely a lot of pressure for me to kind of show what I can do. And that, that's tough because I know everybody's going to be looking at me. I know I'm going to be stuck in the front row. I know I'm going to be sitting next to Ronnie. Yeah, it definitely gets to me. Seven of diamonds. When I'm memorizing things, whether it's a deck of cards or numbers or even a, a poem, in, in a way it's similar to juggling because when I'm juggling, the balls always go in a certain pattern. I think that the, the juggling, the keeping things going, the keeping track of everything, pulling things back if something goes too far, that has really helped me with my memorization techniques. I perform school assembly shows for elementary schools where I have a fun show about money. I'm a former financial planner and since I was 12 I've been a professional entertainer, juggler, magician, comedy, clown, and I've combined the two to create a show that teaches kids the basics of personal finance. How much money goes to um, uh, savings? Before the show, when I'm mingling with the kids, they always say, are you a magician? This is a magic show? I say, I'm not really a magician. Usually by the end they say, you're a clown, aren't you? And that's music to my ears. Yeah, it depends on what you f define as cook. <laughs> if, if, if showing up and looking at a bunch of things that we have in the cupboard and then throwing them together and making a really good meal out of it is cooking, bath by far. If following a recipe in a book and doing it exactly the way it says and coming up with a great meal afterwards, I definitely am. Beth says, oh. General guideline. I see recipes as general guidelines. <sighs> Someone spent at least hours, if not days or years, experimenting with this recipe to come up with it exactly this way, knowing that the quarter teaspoon of nutmeg is perfect, not you know, an eighth of a teaspoon and not a half of a teaspoon. Well, you measure by putting things in the palm of your hand. <laughs> you don't have to use teaspoons and tablespoons. Actually, everybody in my family, every time I talk to them, how's Brad doing with his memory? training. They all want to know. Everybody wants to know. All my friends ask that. I told your parents just the other night about the concept behind, behind it and I think they started to grasp it. They're 83 so memory is very oh. much on their minds. The idea is how many random digits, like 0, 4, 7, 9, 3, can you remember in five minutes? I actually had a big mountaineering expedition of 2009 uh, to Mount McKinley in Alaska. So when I was there, my grandmother actually passed away. She had Alzheimer's. Every time we'd visit, we'd see her kind of getting in this worse state, which was really upsetting. And finally she passed away. I couldn't believe it, you know, it was kind of shocking that something to do with the brain can, you know, lead someone down this path and eventually have them pass away. I've always been close to her and now that she's gone, it's kind of like she's given me this motivation to really train my memory because I don't want to end up like that and that's 
probably something that runs in my family, you know? The mind is something that we need to be aware of just as much as taking care of our physical body. We can work at helping it, we can work at training it, we can work at strengthening it, and not just take for granted that, well, I'm a little bit older, so of course I don't remember things as well. I'm going to write a number in your hand, okay? Close your eyes, tell me what number I write. What number was that? Uh, one. Good. Five. Good. Six. While today we don't have any cures for memory problems, I think there's a growing body of evidence that there are a number of lifestyle and behavioral uh, factors that come into play. Good, now with the other hand. People who stay mentally active, playing games, bridge, cards, chess, checkers, Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles, may also show a reduction in their risk. You're gonna go slap, fist, side. Slap, fist, side, okay? Let me see you do that. Good, again. Very good, very good. There's now a lot of interest in sort of brain training or brain exercises to try to expand people's ability to recall information. And one of the ways we need to think about it is how can we develop exercises that allow us to enhance some of our abilities. You know, I was walking through, uh, on Saturday night, I was walking through uh, uh, Sheraton Hotel in Dallas and, you know, every parking spot is numbered. You know, it has a three-digit number on every single parking spot. And uh, I was just looking at them, you know. I was looking at all the numbers, and I was looking at all the license plates, and my friends were like, uh, what are you doing? You know, and I said, oh, I'm just memorizing all these numbers. You know, if I'm driving down the road, and I'm seeing license plates, I'm immediately turning the numbers into pictures. If I see billboards, I'm going to immediately translate it into a picture. And if I'm walking through a Sheraton hotel with my friends, going to a party, I'm uh, looking at the numbers in the parking spots, memorizing them, you doing this right here. So it's like something that's ingrained in me, you know, it's a habit now. I've always been mediocre at things, like I can do a lot of things, um, but I can't do any of them like perfectly or really well. I'm a jack of all trades, but master of none, right? But, you know, this was uh, memory training was kind of like the first thing that I wanted to be a master of and after I got into this regimen of practicing daily and seeing these awesome improvements I just got hooked and it became kind of this obsession to train and try and beat my scores from the previous day. I do three or four decks of cards every morning when I wake up then I do throughout the day sets of names and faces, maybe three, four times. Lunchtime I do a set of numbers. When I come home from work I do another set of numbers. And that's pretty much what I've been doing on repeat for the past six, seven months. Um, so I'd say I spent maybe three, four hours a day right now memorizing stuff. Am I uh, correct in assuming you hold the record, last year's record? Yep, last for, uh, year. Memorizing the amount of numbers? I, I broke the record, the U.S. record for memorizing numbers in five minutes, uh, 178 digits. Um, so, Nelson, one of the things we wanted to do was sort of have fun with your sure. memory skills and yeah. sort of test them out a little bit. So, up here I have a blank map. In a okay. second, we're going to put up some cities and temperatures. Sounds I'm going to give you. Three, three to five minutes, three to, five yep. minutes to sit and memorize everything. Sure. You're going to turn around and then we're going to see how much you Okay, retained. sounds good. How do you feel? Uh, it's, 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 it's hard, but let's, let's give it a go anyways. So we had caribou that was 32 degrees. 
Let's see, I know Bismarck was 8 degrees. Phoenix. Well, 73. Of course. Oakland. Oh, Oakland was uh, 57. Okay, what about Roswell? Uh, Roswell, oh, 65. Del Rio? Uh, 80. Uh, Brownsville, I think 72. I could be wrong. Okay, it was 77. You got oh, shit. Okay. every Excuse single me. one right except for one. Are you tired right now? Do you feel spent after no. this? No, 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 no. Going through it is a bit nerve-wracking, but then now that it's there, it's, it's fine. 62 is, is, um, is Sandra Bullock from Speed, the movie, you know? She's right. driving a bus, so that movie took place in Los Angeles, so I was like, that makes total what sense. What does 62 have to do with it? Well, 62 is the image that I, of a bus. Remember I was telling you that every pair of digits for me means something. Is like a person, an action, or an object. In that case, I use it as an object. That's a lot of work that you go through to memorize one thing, but I guess it is. It but it, works. at this point, it's just second nature. I don't, I don't have to read these numbers anymore and translate them. I it see them. It automatically means something. It's like, it's like learning a language, right? I mean, right. you speak French, so if you see the word chien, which means dog, dog, you have to think that oh, this is the word for dog. You right. just, if you're fluent in something, you just see it, and that's what it is. It's a shame that none of this these techniques, which are no secret, it, I mean, it's just n not many people know about them. Um, sh it's a shame that they're not being taught to kids, you know, in schools, because it would And we should mention it's not in place of actually studying and knowledge, it's just a way to, to memorize information that can help you exactly. with your knowledge. Right, yeah. I mean, it's, it's not some fancy trick, it's actually applicable, you know, to learning stuff. Right. Um, even if you, I mean, say you're learning the presidents and all you have in your head are these weird pictures that have nothing to do with presidents, it's still a way to get you to remember the presidents. And as long as, you know, you have, you have it memorized through those bizarre images, you know, that's at least a stepping stone to, to actually fully learning something. Pencils down, please. I did. Swap with a neighbor and you're going to score your own. <laughs> How's that work? Sounds good. They were flipped. It was 9 6. Yeah. So 2 36. Wow. Sweet. <laughs> Two thirty-five. Oh, six. Oh, wow. Whoa. Two thirty-six. Yeah. We went from one seventy-eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been doing a little practicing, huh? A, a little bit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
a set. The first card is the person, so five of hearts. I take that as the guy, my friend. Then the next card, say, is queen of hearts. That's my mom, but it's in the action slot. So I would picture my friend Mike cooking, right, the verb, and then say king of hearts was the last card in the set. That's paper, so, with object. So I would picture my friend Mike cooking some paper. That's my cousin Vinny. He's climbing university. A stormtrooper from Star Wars using a taser on french fries. Uh, that's Tiger Woods and he's dealing cards on uh, somebody's mom. Ben Franklin blowing bubbles at a sword. That's Oliver North, he's counting money. And the last one I usually just quickly remember based on what it is, and this is a sumo uh, person. The second part is sticking those pictures um, on objects or in rooms along a journey. They're called anchor points, or I call them anchor points. Different places I'm going to put a mental picture. I'll take familiar places in my mind, um, like my childhood home, uh, my current home, uh, workplace, and I set it out in my mind kind of like a walkthrough that I'll walk through the exact same way every time. At the tournaments, you know, they'll hear guys complaining, you know, I'm distracted because there's cameras over there, or I'm distracted because something was dropping over there, and, uh, and I don't even notice it. You know, and, and the reason I don't notice this is because I, I train in extreme circumstances like this, mm -hmm. and at the tournament, I don't even notice the distractions. It's time to see how I did. So, we uh, go through here, and pull them up, see how I do. From the bottom. Am I going top or bottom? From the bottom? Uh, yeah. Either. So I'm pulling them down this way. Okay, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Do this up next, right? You gotta look at trying to peek at your time though. So let's... Here you go. You got it. Ronnie, how'd you do? 222. Got a perfect, perfect. Didn't beat Nelson, but I got it perfect. There you go. Put, your, put down your 52. It's gonna be the, 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 the There are one left. What do we get? Oh. Minute three. <laughs> one minute. 33? No, three no, seconds. One minute and three seconds. Oh. That's one minute and three seconds? Yes. Nice. Oh, my God. 103 is on the U.S. Naked. Oh, my God. I'm going to New York City and I'm bringing balloons. Balloons, okay. I'm going to New York City. I'm bringing balloons and a shoe. My girlfriend is Magda, and uh, we met in Miami. We've been together about a year and a quarter, and we moved together to Boston. And she's been through this whole ordeal with me. You know, I'm constantly saying, I'll be right there, I just gotta memorize a couple of things, and I'd be in my room for like an hour. So I can imagine that on her part, it can get annoying. I'm a bit obsessive about it, but I feel like she's been really supportive. When I first met him, he asked me what my favorite number was, and I was like, well, okay, you know, I, I had never really, I mean, I thought about it, I guess, when you're younger, like, you have a favorite number, but I was like, why is this guy asking me, and I told him, and I was like, um, it's nine, you know, why, and he's like, don't worry, I was just, that's a good number, that's a good number, but don't worry, and I was like, okay, interesting, and then he told me, you know, all about his mountain climbing, and everything that he's been into throughout the years, he just has a lot of interests, and it's not, every day that you meet someone who, you know, memorizes cards and numbers and wants to climb Mount Everest and like, he's a nerd, but he's a cool nerd and that's what I like. <laughs>
You give them 200 words and uh, they get 15 minutes to remember as many of those 200 words as they can. We bring them back on stage and I begin by asking the first person what the first word is and the second person the second word is. We are ready to go. We're going to start off with our first word. We'll begin with breath. Aorta. That is not the first word, right? Mr. Brad, you're out. Uh, you can stay there for now. First word? Office. Office is the first word. Honey, it's over to you. Uh, aorta. Aorta is the second word, Brad. Third word? Twig. Twig is correct. We're over to you. Urge. Urge is the fourth word. Is that correct, audience? Okay, fifth. Insect. Insect is correct. We're moving over to the sixth word. Wolf. Wolf is correct for the 16th word, which now takes us to 17 for Nelson. Run. Run is correct. Now we're over to run. Soul. Soul is the 37th word. Elevator. Elevator moves this over to Michael. Numeral. Numeral is correct for number 39. Zipper. Zipper up to number 71. Automobile. Automobile gets us to 72. And I'm done. You're done. Okay, congratulations to our It's two deck of cards with three mental athletes. They get five minutes to take those two decks of cards off stage, study the orders, and we come back and here I am with a deck of cards with the first athlete giving me the first card and the second athlete giving me the second card and the third athlete the third card. Only one person is left standing, the U.S. memory champion. First card is the uh, Queen of Spades. Okay, we're off and running with our final event of the day. Five of clubs. Five of spades. Ten of clubs. Ten of clubs it is. Two of spades. Eight of spades. That is not the correct card. We're down to two. It's not about beating them. It's about me pushing my mind and me doing stuff that I didn't think I could do, you know, getting better, me more mentally sharp, and that's very, very uh, appealing to me. Queen of Diamonds. That's correct. That's the card. King of Clubs. Ace of Hearts. Okay. Seven of Clubs. Eight of Clubs. Eight of Clubs it is. Four of Spades. Four of Spades. Um, Three of diamonds. Three of diamonds it is. Six of spades. Six of spades. Three of clubs. Jack of diamonds. One deck of cards. When I, when I train, is like I'm reinforcing these memories, like actual memories of places I used to live. Um, people I love, people that are gone, you know, made up people that I enjoy watching or thinking about, you know, they, they're in my everyday life and they get stamped there f forever and that's awesome that, you know, a house I used to live in as a child is now in here whenever I want it and I may never see the place again, you know, I may have some photos of it but I actually have the place in here and if I ever want to go there I just go. And um, that's another thing about these memory techniques is you, you get to keep those places for life. Um, you get to store them in there and you know, that's, that's what life's about, you know, is those, those little moments, those, those, those tiny things that you, know, you sit there and think about and just relish in the, in, in the memory. Jack of Hearts. That is correct. We're into our second deck. First time ever. Ten of Spades. Seven of Hearts. 
Eight of spades. Two of clubs. Nine of diamonds. Five of spades. Eight of hearts. King of spades. Um, four clubs. Four clubs. Four clubs. Jack of clubs. Queen of diamonds. Six of hearts. Four of hearts. Oh, I would just like to be the first one to congratulate the new USA champion, Nelson Dell. today and you know like this deck of cards these two decks of cards I memorized in my grandma's um, country side house in France um, you know and I really want to dedicate this to her because this is I, I wouldn't be here otherwise um, I, she really inspired me after she passed um, having Alzheimer's I was afraid for myself um, I wanted to show myself and others that with a bit of training you can have the tools in your mind to you know, maybe protect yourself in the future if you have struggles with your memory. So I want to inspire people, hopefully, to, to, to just learn a few things that I've done and, and what we've done, and, and you'll see the difference and it'll pay off. Thank you so much, everybody. But really, for me, the motivation was always help people have fun. You know, there's a lot of things that are really serious in this world. If I can help people have fun for 15 minutes or a half hour or 45 minutes and learn something at the same time, that's, that's a dream come true to me. It's a fun ride, you know, and, and I just, I want to always keep challenging myself, you know, whether it's memorizing baseball stats or, you know, country, the country music charts or whatever. I enjoy the, the next thing. What's the next thing? 